Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today is Wednesday and I want to tell you once again that when you start your day with God through prayer, you receive assurance. In other words, there is no fear within you. If you have started your day with God, you shouldn't be afraid of what will happen throughout the day. Sometimes, there may be unexpected events, and things may not go as planned. You may receive bad news, and bad things may happen. But if you have started the day with, I am, whatever happens, you will not be afraid. Perhaps there are people who scare you. You might be fearful of your boss, or you may have made a mistake that is causing problems at work, or in your country of residence, or in your business. But I want to tell you that if you have started the day with, I am, then regardless of your situation, you should not be afraid. If you have started the day with, I am, you should not fear people, and you should not fear anything. Starting the day with, I am, means entrusting your life to him in the morning. It's the first thing you should do when you wake up. I'd like to share with you Psalms 118 verse 6, which says, The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. I really love this part. If the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. No matter what happens, if you are with, I am, you should not fear anything because he sees you. Regardless of the circumstances, you will not be afraid because you know that there is nothing greater or more powerful than him. If you start the day by praying, you begin the day with the creator of heaven and earth, with the Almighty, with the one who can deliver you from anything that may happen to you. As I often say, it doesn't mean you won't have any problems. You will go through tough times, but you will not be afraid, and you will not be discouraged. You will be able to say, no matter what happens, I am with God. Are you with God in the morning? For those of you who are listening and have already left your homes, have you taken the time to pray before leaving? How do you pray? Praying is humbling yourself, telling God that you place everything that will happen during the day in his hands. You tell him that he has the final say. It's true that you are intelligent, he has given you money, perhaps he has given you a job or physical strength. But regardless of what you have, you place it in his hands and you show him that you can do nothing on your own. He is the one who strengthens you, he is the one who called you, he knows you. That's why you can say, the Lord is with me, I will not fear. Nothing should scare you. The last part of the verse says, what can men do to me? Someone may have authority over you. It could be your boss who has the power to hire or fire you. But it doesn't matter because you know that all the good things you receive come from God. You should understand that all the good things in your life come from God, and you cannot receive them without his help. You need to understand what the Word of God says says in James 1 verse 17, which says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. You must understand that all the good things you have come from God. That's why you should start your day with God in prayer. If you're listening to me and you're still at home, do not leave without praying. Prayer isn't just a formula to follow. You don't pray just to be protected, but you pray because you want to establish a relationship with God. You must understand that God created heaven and earth, He has authority over all things. He created every person on earth, and He reigns over the visible world and the invisible world. You must understand that God is above everything. He created everyone, He is Almighty, and His power knows no bounds. He speaks, and it is done. He created the moon and the sun with His word. He reigns in the heavens, He's surrounded by billions of angels. He rules over all things, and He holds all power in His hands. This same God tells you that He can start the day with you. I don't know if you understand the power of these words. If you call upon Him, He answers you, He comes to your side, He takes care of you, and He protects you, His angels come to you. It is an immense privilege that we have. Every child of God listening to me must understand that this is a grace that God has granted us. That's why you shouldn't be afraid. Many people are afraid when troubles come, but I want us to learn to prepare ourselves while we are still at home. I always prepare myself when I am at home. That's why the things that happen to me during the day do not frighten me because I know I have started the day with I am. If you begin the day with I am, you have the assurance that he knows everything, he sees everything, he protects you, and he is your refuge. So, I want to encourage everyone listening to me to pray before starting the day. Make prayer a habit, let it become your lifestyle. Every day before leaving your home, humble yourself before God, confess His glory, give thanks for His love. Say something to Him before you step out, and avoid complaining. Expect to receive something from Him and know that you have nothing to fear. Don't wait for problems to arise to pray, but start your day with, I am, and know that whatever happens, you have nothing to fear.
It's now time to continue the teaching called, Deliverance from Jealousy, that I started on Monday. I told you that the purpose of this teaching is for us to first realize the danger of jealousy. Once we understand the danger of jealousy, once we understand that it's a tool Satan uses to destroy our lives, then we can avoid being jealous, we can be delivered from jealousy. It's the word of God that will deliver us from jealousy. If you follow this teaching, the verses we're going to read will help you be delivered from jealousy. Jealousy is a trap of Satan. Many people live in jealousy, and they think it's normal to be jealous. But I want you to know that it's not normal at all for a child of God to live in jealousy. It's a very bad thing, it's bad fruit that should no longer be a part of your nature. You must be delivered from jealousy. There are doors that will open in your life once you are delivered from jealousy. We saw that Cain killed his brother Abel just because Abel had pleased God. I don't know if you understand this. Abel's offering pleased God, and it angered Cain. And then Cain attacked his brother and he killed him. I have a question for you. What does it change if you kill him? Will it make God rejoice in you? God had already warned him to be careful not to fall into sin because sin was waiting at the door. But Cain killed his brother without thinking about the consequences. Often, jealousy makes you act without thinking. Will God love you more after you've killed someone? Will this murder bring you blessings? Or will it make your situation worse? Jealousy causes you to act without thinking. Let's look at a verse that shows us how we can overcome jealousy. In Matthew 22 verse 36, we see that one day the Pharisees asked Jesus a question. They said to him, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? In verse 37, Jesus replied to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And in verse 38, Jesus said, This is the first and great commandment. But he didn't stop there. He added, And the second is like it. It's a second commandment, but it is similar to the first. In other words, both commandments are very important. So, the second commandment is like the first, and it is as follows, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In verse 40, Jesus said, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I want to talk to you about this second commandment that says you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you pray and God gives you the strength to follow the second commandment, if you can love your neighbor as yourself, then you will have killed and buried all the jealousy that was in you. Jealousy will have no power over you anymore. When you reach the point where you wish well for your brother or sister, when you wish them the same good things you wish for yourself, the same success, the same marital happiness, jealousy will no longer have a place in your life. The problem is that people tend to be very individualistic. They only seek their own interests and don't think about others. But I will show you that when you wish well for others, it touches the heart of God, and it can lead Him to give you what you desire through a way you didn't know. When you bless others, you are also blessed. The Word of God says there is more blessing in giving than in receiving. When you give, you are sowing. I want you to understand this, when you give, you are sowing, and when you sow, you reap. The first thing to remember is that every time you sow something, there will be a harvest, meaning something you receive in return. When you wish well for others, you are doing a very good thing that touches the heart of God because you are putting into practice the commandment that tells you to love your neighbor as yourself. I repeat it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If I truly love my neighbor as myself, I cannot get angry because they are blessed. Imagine this, your friend is blessed, your brother in Christ or someone else is blessed, and you get irritated. Why? Because you think you should be the one receiving that blessing, not him. It's pure selfishness. Many children of God are bound by selfishness. When you are selfish, you block the hand of God. God doesn't want selfish people, he is looking for those who love their neighbors as themselves. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you will be happy when your neighbor is blessed. Even if you haven't received anything, you rejoice in the blessings of others. My desire is that we can all reach this point. We will continue tomorrow. May the Lord bless you, and have a great day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.